Welcome to Inside Edition Animals. Here are some of our favorite wacky, unique, and sometimes scary stories about animals. First up, some of the strangest things found inside pets. Here are some of the strangest things that animals have eaten. First up, in March of 2020, a veterinary team used forceps and their bare hands to save a python's life. Can you hold the snake's mouth? The snake swallowed something it shouldn't have, and her rescuers were determined to remove it. They started pulling and kept pulling. Wow. Don't put the tube. It was a beach towel. It happened in Sydney, Australia at the Small Animal Specialist Hospital. The snake was an 18-year-old jungle carpet python, and this team probably felt a lot better after having an entire beach towel in its body. <laughs> in 2015, a Labrador named Tiki had quite the feast of underwear. Each pair of underwear that I pulled out, I'm like, here's another pair. This is pair number six, pair number seven, and pair number eight. Vet tech Emily Cottle retrieved eight pairs of underwear from Tiki's stomach during emergency surgery. It was incredibly shocking, and once I started looking at them, I knew the brands. Sisters Sarah and Sydney didn't notice they were missing the items, but the Pittsburgh area pair did notice that Tiki wasn't feeling so hot. They took him to the vet for an x-ray. I see this big, huge things, and I'm not quite sure if this is some kind of a foreign body or there's something going on. Fearing it could be cancer, Dr. Hisham Ibrahim performed surgery on eight-year-old Tiki. Fortunately, he didn't have cancer. We identified some of the underwear as my own. And, and some as mine, but, but not all. And that wasn't all they found in Tiki's tummy. They also extracted 62 hair bands. We never really noticed that they were all gone. In 2016, on Animal Planet's The Vet Life, veterinarian Michael Levine saw a pit bull puppy experiencing some discomfort. If they've eaten something, you know, whether it's something toxic or something that causes it a, like an obstruction, a blockage, both of which could be life-threatening. I'm glad you got him in here, you know, as soon as you did. It's really scary. He's like a member of the family, so you, I get worried about him like I would get worried about my kids getting sick. All right, I'm going to take him back and go get some x-rays. We're going to, you know, just going to take him back for one second. We'll be right back, okay? Dr. Levine took the dog in for x-rays. Ooh, he's got a... Looks like something stuck inside. What is it? I can't tell. He performed a procedure on the puppy. I see something there, some kind of material. I think I can get it. Oh, my God, it looks like a... It looks like... Is that a sock? Aww. With the offending sock removed, the puppy was on its way to recovery, and its family was overjoyed to see it healthy again. What's up? He's so excited to see you guys. Veterinary Practice News publishes an annual list of odd things that pets have eaten. They include spoons and toys and money. There was even a wristwatch. And this dog managed to eat dozens of tea light candles. The biggest problem was the, all the wax from the candles was actually blocking the exit from his stomach. So he had a functional blockage because of all the wax. Dr. Laura Wallach said she removed 39 metal candle holders from the dog's stomach. Fortunately, he was no worse for the wear. He recovered amazingly well. He, like five days after surgery, was wagging his tail, looking for something else to eat. This vet thought someone was playing a prank on him when he saw this x-ray of his turtle patient. I looked at the screen and I said, all right, who's got the turtle necklace? And they said, no, 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 this is, this is real. I said, yeah, right, bullshit. So I picked up, I picked up Lola and I checked her all around, made sure they didn't tape anything to her belly. But it was no joke. The real life turtle ate a turtle shaped pendant. We loaded her up on fiber and laxatives in hopes that maybe it would go. So we waited a little bit and decided that we could certainly get it out by cutting it out. The surgery was successful. It was one of the oddest, especially the coincidence of a tortoise eating a turtle. I mean, go figure. 
This 10 year old dog ate some of its owner's medical marijuana infused coconut oil that had dripped onto the floor. And suddenly I hear licking and look down and I was like, oh no, <laughs> no, Roscoe, no. Soon, Roscoe looked pretty stoned. He's, you know, wibbling back and forth and looking at us and his eyes are all glazed. Veterinarian Dr. Jeff Werber says if your dog ingests pot, call your vet. There's a good chance they'll have eaten too much. They're not going to look at the, the, the plate of brownies and say, oh, let me see, I, I think I should only have just one. Uh, they're all gone. So, and that's the problem, is that they don't know when to stay enough. <laughs> and in 2019, a man in Florida should have stopped before feeding a bagel to an alligator. He's a good boy. The Daytona Beach man considered the gator his friend. The 10-foot reptile lived in his backyard and even got a name. And now I want to introduce you to Hank. He's my alligator. The man posted the bagel video on his Facebook page. That summoned police, who issued him a citation. There are also plenty of examples from fiction, literature, and myth of animals eating odd things. In the Old Testament, the prophet Jonah was consumed and subsequently thrown up by a whale or a giant fish. And the classic thriller Jaws revealed the contents of one shark's stomach. But at the end of the day, it may be better to stick to what nature intended. A patrolman in New Jersey thought he was responding to a deer struck by a car, but it looked more like a carjacking. Video from the Howell Patrolman's dash cam shows a driver pulled over on the side of the road after having just hit a deer with her car. But then the deer tried to get in the car. It was persistent, but the driver, Ellen Sager, was just as persistent to keep it out. She said she pulled over to see if the deer was okay. But when she opened the car door, it must have thought that was an invitation to come inside. She said it was frantic, but she pushed her foot into its chest to stop it from getting in. It got the message and backed off. Sager was okay, but unfortunately, the deer did not survive its injuries. Susan Schold of Minnesota had a problem. I was laying on my couch looking out into the backyard and noticed that these squirrels were just eating all of my bird seed. I was getting mad actually. I was trying to figure out how I could get rid of them. She also had a solution. And I remembered a news story I had seen that the Philadelphia police had used Crisco on the light poles in town to keep the fans off the poles after the games. And I thought, well, what, what could it hurt? I had some butter flavored Crisco. I thought, well, why not? So I ran up to my kitchen, got the Crisco, put my coat on, ran outside, greased up the pole and waited. The result, no contraband bird seed for this squirrel. <laughs> you know, I don't mind giving them a little seed, but it's that time of year when the birds really need it. The squirrels haven't given up. They would try and jump onto the feeder itself, completely not using the pole. So they, you know, they're smart, um, but I'm gonna be smarter. And a note to the makers of Crisco. I only wish that, uh, so in the, in the winter time, it's the squirrels that I struggle with, but in the summertime, it's the black bears. So um, if only Crisco had something that would keep black bears off the pole, we would be in business. Now, a puppy who got a new job after being snatched out of a gator's jaws. This is a big day. You're going to be a detective now, okay? A famous puppy got a new job. Five-month-old Gunner made news recently after he was snatched from the jaws of an alligator. His unflappable owner, Richard Wilbanks, was praised for keeping his cool during the frightening incident. We were just out for a Sunday morning stroll by the pond, and... Uh, Gunner, all of a sudden, just I heard him yelp and looked around and saw the alligator swimming out in the pond with him. And uh, so I just jumped in the water and caught up with the alligator, and got my hands on him, and dragged him up to the bank, and pried and pinned him down, pried his jaws open. And I just wasn't going to let it have my puppy for breakfast. The whole time, Will Banks never let go of his cigar. Crazy story, happy to say that Gunner is here today because of Rick's fast actions, jumping in without hesitation, 
It happened in, yes, Florida. That tenacity is exactly what we need with our detectives, and Gunner is a proud detective today. The Lee County Sheriff's Office is making the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel a deputy dog. Do you swear to uphold the constitutional law for the Lee County Sheriff's Office, Gunner? Okay. Gunner's new gig isn't just ceremonial. He'll be working with the Sheriff's Office to teach kids about safety. And in Florida, that can mean alligator safety. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission says there are about seven unprovoked alligator attacks per year. If you don't believe them, just ask Gunner. There is nothing like a nap. Just ask these elephants. They're part of a herd of wild Asian elephants that has been making its way northward through China for the last 15 months. Several days ago, the herd was seen traipsing through a town in the dead of night. But this nap is the first time observers have seen the whole herd sleeping at once. Usually, some of the elephants stand guard while others snooze. Of course, not all of them are asleep. One calf seems ready to play so as not to disturb their slumber. Firefighters from Kunming City in Yunnan province monitored the herd via drone. As the elephants continue their progress, authorities are trying to clear a path for them. They've also left out two tons of food. The pachyderms have traveled over 300 miles so far from their home in a nature reserve. Scientists say they don't know why the group is traveling or where they're headed but their journey is captivating people around the world. You may have seen that dramatic video of hundreds of birds literally falling from the sky into a neighborhood. What on earth was going on? It's perfectly calm when suddenly this happens. A flock of black birds swirl to the ground. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. Hundreds of the birds appear like a plume of black smoke. A moment later, many of them fly off, but lots are killed on impact. The video was caught on a surveillance camera in Mexico. So what's going on here? There is speculation the birds were hit by toxic fumes or electrocuted. But this expert says they were likely under attack by a predator. My best guess is this is a predator. This is a hawk or a falcon that's come in into the flock. Whatever the cause, it's pretty amazing. We'll be right back with more amazing animal stories, including a farmer who was shocked when a cow gave birth to a two-faced calf. Would you look at that? Let's see it. Show us your stuff. How about ice skating in the street? This is a street in front of my house. Look at him go. An ice storm in North Dakota created the perfect conditions for it. Clearly a professional. Is it good ice? It's definitely not bad. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. Check out this adorable albino penguin. All the people at the zoo are very nice, penguin. They'll treat you real respectable like. Well, Adam Sandler wasn't wrong about that in Billy Madison. A zoo in Poland let a little baby penguin take its time before making its debut Friday, and it was a very rare sight to behold. That is because this penguin is nothing like the others. It's an albino penguin, the only one on Earth. Watch it shuffle into a group of penguins with standard coloring before trying to waddle back inside. Albinism is a congenital disorder that causes a lack of pigment resulting in white hair, feathers, and pink eyes in people and animals. The little white penguin, between three and four months old, finally took its place in the flock. Zoo-goers got a glorious view from outside the enclosure. The lone albino shows brilliant contrast to its more standard black and white relatives. This special penguin hatched back in December, but the zoo held back the bird until it was a little bit older for its own safety. A zoo official says the penguin is now being cared for by its parents and two other older birds. The zoo added, it's a good thing this penguin is in their care. Experts say the albino would stand out because of its rare coloring and become a prime target for predators in the wild. Albino animals have also been known to get rejected from their groups for looking differently. After a little while in the public eye, the snow white bird looked like it gained a little confidence, raised its wing, and did a little tail shimmy. 
As for whether it's male or female, well, that will have to wait for the gender reveal. The zoo has held back that detail so far. They also haven't given the penguin a name yet. We weren't able to ask the other penguins if they were jealous of the albino's flair, but we can only hope they embrace their pale relative for how uniquely special it is. Hey girl, how are you feeling today, huh? A baby calf was recently born with two faces at a farm in Baker County, Florida. The calf, Annabelle, has two heads, four eyes, two mouths, noses, and ears, but she can't feed from her mother, so she is bottle fed. WJXT visited the farm and spoke to the farmer, Dwight Cruz. She will come in and lick her and, and just smell of her and all and make sure that she's okay, I guess, you know, and then she, she goes back out and she'll stay gone a while and come back and check on her again. Dwight has been working on the farm for 60 years and has never seen one of his cows give birth to a calf so unique. It's a two-headed calf, it, that, you know, that's a, I cannot believe, you know, I've heard of them, but I've never seen one before and this is my, my first one. Annabelle can't walk and her head is very heavy. Ripley's Believe It or Not reached out to the farm and says that 40 days is the longest a two-faced calf has ever lived. I would like to see her live and, <laughs> and actually be able to, to get up and walk and function. It's sad that the odds to survive aren't in Annabelle's favor, but we can always hope for a miracle. When I set him down, he kind of walks like a little kangaroo. Depending on how you look at him, this precious pooch kind of walks like a human, kind of like Tyrannosaurus Rex, or kind of like a kangaroo. He's like a little meerkat. The dog named Crest was supposed to be put down because he can't use his front two legs. That is a very old injury by the looks of it because it's already kind of eaten away. So that's gonna be a pretty hard thing to fix. The injury so old, doctors at the vet ranch said his broken leg healed like this. So they went to work to try and fix it. His leg was put in a splint and took several months to heal. Still has his little splint on, which is better than last time, so all's good. It's been a couple months since we um, worked on Crest. His leg, I don't think it's going to heal much more than it has already, so I think that's about as good as it's going to get. From here, the hope is Crest will be adopted into a loving family that doesn't care how he walks. When an enormous humpback whale washed up on a beach in Argentina, humans came to the rescue, a lot of them. 30 people worked for 28 hours to return the whale to the water in the resort town of Mar del Tuyu, about 200 miles south of Buenos Aires. Rescuers worked around the clock and brought in some mechanical help. People dug trenches under the whale while the Coast Guard used a crane to dislodge it from the sand. But that didn't work. They say the whale was becoming weak and waves kept washing it toward the beach instead of out to sea. Then rescuers attached a harness to the whale and used a tugboat to drag it out into the water. It worked. The whale swam away and people back on the beach wished it well, grateful they were able to help. This gorilla had an amazing interaction with a little girl. Touching moment between a little girl and a gorilla. Hand in hand, these two are so cute as they press their palms together through the glass enclosure. Gus is a five month old Ireland gorilla with a story for the books. The animal is listed as critically endangered. Gus is also the first gorilla born at the Fort Worth Zoo in its 107 year history. His mother Gracie has kept Gus close to her, often holding him in her arm. But as he's gotten older, Gus likes to experience the world around him, which includes encounters like this one. Boy, do they make an adorable yet unlikely pair that's making us go bananas. A home is going up in flames and a beloved member of the family is trapped inside. Come on, Charlie, come on. 
Come on, buddy. It's Charlie the dog, and he's desperate. He leaps for his life, but he isn't unscathed. Roll him off, roll him off. Oh, he's burnt up. Watch out, watch out. Oh my gosh, he's burnt. A rescuer runs to get a water hose to ease Charlie's pain, but it won't reach. The hose won't get any closer. Hi, puppy. How you doing, buddy? Here's poor Charlie at the animal hospital. He's got a nasal thing for oxygen right now. Oh, he suffered some burns on the back. The Stump family's house in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania was destroyed, but at least they still have Charlie. By show of hands, how many of you are going to spoil Charlie for the rest of his life? Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling. Charlie, come on. Come on, buddy. He's coming. Are you coming? Come on, Popots. Come on. Meet the couple that lives with 17 kangaroos. We love you. I do love you. It all began when a man drove up to their home and asked them for help. The chap pulled up at the front fence and said, you'd look after wildlife. And I said, why? And he said, oh, I've got a kangaroo in the car. And that's how it started. That was their first, first kangaroo. And uh, his name was Bobby. Then the rescuing got bigger and bigger. We realised that there was no one here for these joeys and they were being euthanised. Um, not because there was anything wrong with them, there was just nowhere to go. They've all got different personalities and to me everyone looks different. Teresa and Tony's goals for the kangaroos is rehab, then release. This is Willow. Willow is about eight months old. Um, she came in, she was night feed, she had no fluff. So um, she, she just loves smooches. If she, if she could live in your back pocket, she would. Now the phone rings every day. There's rescues every day. We do what we can. Um, they've become our life now, but they're worth every, every minute and penny. And the hugs aren't bad either. of monkeys. That's what people are seeing all over the streets of India. They're also taking over government buildings. Watch as they turn the city of New Delhi into their personal playground. They've even taken to the presidential palace. It's estimated there are between four and 5,000 rhesus macaque monkeys causing havoc in the area. Government officials have apparently been complaining about them, going so far as to tell people not to make eye contact with the animals. It's even said authorities have hired around 40 monkey chasers to help solve the problem. But some say the simple step of not providing food to the monkeys could make a difference. If you have garbage and food available, then you are sending wrong signals to the monkey. It's going to think you're a, you're keeping food available. And this is a problem that will get solved only with time. Until the monkey issue is solved, government employees are on guard while on the property. Some armed with sticks in the event of monkey attacks. This situation, no one is monkeying around. Thanks for watching Inside Edition Animals. More Inside Edition coming up. Powerful stories that change the way you think. Impactful investigations that change the way you see. How many times has your car been stolen? Five times. Yeah. What? Do you think that you're a responsible owner of tigers? I damn sure do. We are love Heartwarming moments that change the way you feel. <laughs> Amazing. Now available in a place that changes the way you watch TV. <laughs> Inside Edition, streaming. Welcome to Inside Edition Animals. Jars, mud, fences. Yep, we're starting out with some of our favorite stories about animals that got stuck. Who put that there? You'd never guess how some of these furry friends wound up stuck in these places. Let's take a look. Zion the Black Cat may have just eight lives left after getting stuck on the side of a cliff in Los Angeles. Zion was found about 100 feet off the ground 
making its great escape while its family was hosting a party. A neighbor spotted the feline and called authorities who brought Zion back to safety. <laughs> How about this unlikely duo? Taylor the German Shepherd and Godzilla the 80-pound tortoise. They got stuck in this tunnel. It's usually Godzilla's hiding place, using it to hibernate in the winter. But this was the first time Taylor decided to check it out for herself. I'm just thinking, like, how does she get down there? Then one of the owners tried to dig them out. I went head first into the tunnel, which I realized shortly after was a bad move. Finally, it's firefighters to the rescue. They did the trick by offering Godzilla her favorite snack, lettuce, freeing them both. <laughs> hey, kitty cat. What did you do? You went to the wrong hole, huh? Wrong way. Look at that tiny kitten head stuck in that tiny fence hole. Don't touch. Hold on a second. I know, I know, I know. Los Angeles Animal Rescue helped free the little feline. Hey, Mr. Nash, thanks for coming out. They believe the stray cat regularly went in and out of the bottom of the fence, but one day got shot with a BB gun and frightened, went through the wrong hole. A little mineral oil, some careful maneuvering, and a short time later, the cat was freed safely. People, yep. we got her. Hooray. And for the real celebration, the stray was taken to a local shelter where it was then adopted into its forever home. At just one week old, this alpaca has gotten itself into quite the sticky situation. Just a little head pokes up from this badger hole. It happened on this Wisconsin farm. Look at the concerned mama, waiting for her baby to be safely rescued. After a bit of digging, Farmer John was able to get the alpaca out. Not quite a stick in the mud, but you get it. This 66-year-old man and his pet parrot were on a stroll when the parrot couldn't free itself from a recently dredged lake in Illinois. In went the owner, which is how they wound up here. That's when the fire department was called. This was a pretty tame pet, so that, that helped. I mean, he was uh, more than happy to stay on his owner's shoulder and uh, uh, ride the whole ride back to the, the shore. The chief says the situation could have been dire. Had he not had someone there in the park with him, it, it's quite possible that he could have still been stuck there and died of you know heat exhaustion. But luckily, all is well, and both parrot and its human turned out just fine. Look at this jughead. A raccoon, confused because a jar is stuck on its head. He was crying the whole time in there. It was so sad. A couple who rescues animals was called in to help. They used cooking oil to get the critter loose. <laughs> Proving peanut butter got him into quite the sticky situation. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. Things for this wild fox got a little too hairy when it got stuck in a net. Pennsylvania firefighters gingerly cut around the animal's head before setting him loose into the woods. Forget hitchhiking. This little girl wanted a ride and she wanted it now. This koala got stuck in a car's wheel arch and stayed there for 10 miles. It's amazing and it's a, it's a windy road, it's downhill so the car would have been lurching from side to side. The driver had no clue the koala was there and only found it after parking and hearing cries from inside the car. That's when Australian fire officials were called and she was let out. A local animal rescue organization took Kelly to get checked out, kept her under observation for a week, then released her back into the wild. And this rhino managed to get jammed up with a tire. An animal conservation group in Zimbabwe noticed the rhino exhausted himself trying to get rid of the rubber ring. Working together, they got it off. And he was so hungry that immediately after, the rhino stopped for a snack. Look at this adorable baby deer hiding behind a mailbox, scared to cross the road. Mama deer sees it struggling, stops, and runs back. It was just so beautiful how she she went back and, and she got her baby. Tony Gardner from Iowa caught the cute sighting while delivering packages. What really caught my attention was if you look, it almost looked as if she looked both ways before she crossed the road again. 
to make sure that no other cars were coming. The baby carefully follows, and when Mama Deer runs, it runs too. It was just something beautiful that I had never seen before, and I was excited to be able to witness that. And this absolutely goes to show the power of, you know, a mother's love extends far beyond humans. And a fawn that now probably knows its family won't ever leave it. This poor little guy is stuck in a tangle. Oh, he's got his foot wrapped in there pretty good. This nervous baby raccoon is wrapped in a basketball net in Los Angeles. And a team of animal rescuers is there to save the day. Mama raccoon was on edge trying to get to her baby. Look at Mama, she's adorable. Here she comes. She climbs up a wall to get a better view of the rescue in progress. Hi, Mama. We're gonna help your baby right now. Okay, Pope, I got him. And it was scary for oh, the baby Mama. raccoon as he resists the people trying to help. Oh. It's okay, buddy. And just like that, with the help of some scissors, he's free. Of course, his next move, scampering straight to Mama. There you go, Mama. Right where he belongs. It's the latest offbeat critter to be designated a comfort animal, an alligator named Wally. But as Stephen Fabian found out, Wally really does bring calm. Imagine encountering this wild beast out for a stroll. Joe Henny of York, Pennsylvania, takes his pet alligator Wally everywhere with him. The five foot long gator with 83 razor sharp teeth is, get this, his emotional support animal. Here is your official card, mm -hmm. registered emotional support animal Wally, with a picture of Wally, his date of birth, January 3rd, 2015. So yes. this shows you're not kidding. No, not at all. He is federally licensed emotional support animal. The pair sometimes gets frightened looks. No, You're I'm terrified. I <laughs> but if you had hold him, you'd understand why he's an no, emotional support. Wasn't, no, no. <laughs> this woman wanted nothing to do with Wally until Joe convinced her to hold him. Oh, support his tail. Oh my God. There, see? When it's time yeah, to give him right. back. No, he's saying, where's my kiss? No, kiss. No. <laughs> no. You can. <laughs> Wally loves getting kisses. <laughs> My husband's gonna be jealous, Wally. And being hugged. Aww. He is quite the ladies' man. Isn't he gorgeous? Yep. Wow. He is heavy. Yeah, he'll hug oh, you, yes. Bigger than all my babies. <laughs> oh my God, he feels so good. He's like one of those weighted blankets that they use for stress. He's so heavy. <laughs> oh, you're Okay, there you go. He's so gentle that Joe actually takes him to a daycare center. The alligator just touched me. The alligator touched you? Yeah. Where parents and staff can't get enough. Hi, sweet Wally. See, I naturally want to rock him. He's my baby. My heart's like racing. <laughs> Isn't he cool? Yeah. Do you want a pet alligator now? You want to take an alligator home? No. Wally's also a regular at the pet store and even the dollar store. Wally, can I interest you in a Gatorade? Huh? Huh? What do you think? What's your favorite flavor, Wally? Back home, the 35-pound gator has free reign of the house. Wally loves watching TV and even has his own pool. Aren't you worried he's going to bite somebody? No. No, nope. Wally, you can't, I don't think there's anything you can do to make him bite anybody. So how exactly does Wally help Joe emotionally? I don't know what I would have done without him. Joe says Wally's cuddles have helped him through depression. Uh, he's not your typical alligator. He's just, he's more affectionate. Uh, he just comes up and he just lays and cuddles. He'll get, take naps with me. Who knew a gator could offer one guy so much emotional support? This adorable baby elephant got caught on camera chasing after some birds. An adorable newborn elephant had some fun playing with some low-flying swallows at Kruger National Park in South Africa. This little guy is chasing them, running around looks like he's having a ball. Kruger National Park is one of the largest game reserves in Africa and has more species of large mammals than any other African game reserve. If you want to stay up to date on all the action, follow at Latest Kruger on Instagram. 
It was a rough day at work for this reporter who had an unpleasant encounter with a bird before a live shot. Australian Nine Network's Brett McLeod was reporting from outside Parliament in Melbourne when a magpie swooped right into his eye. The incident might have given him a flashback to Hitchcock's The Birds. It happened just seconds before he was set to go live with his updates, so viewers at home didn't get to see the bird strike live. McLeod was able to shake it off and deliver his news like a professional, with his co-workers later praising him for being unflappable. Australians at play also got a little too close to some more dangerous animals. Drone video shows people at Sydney's Bondi Beach swimming right over sharks beneath them. They're believed to be gray nurses, and they were feeding on a school of salmon that was swimming near the beach for about an hour. While several sharks were spotted by the drone camera, none of them made contact with humans and seemed to be satisfied with their fish food. Nature is beautiful, but can sometimes be scary. Stay right here for more Inside Edition Animals. Look who's singing in the shower. Okay, it's not the rainforest, but this bird sure does seem to be enjoying himself. Welcome back to Inside Edition Animals. How do you catch a bull that's on the loose? Here's one option. Two youngsters are loading up a cooler on a hot summer day when this happens. Yup, that's a 1,500 pound runaway bull on the loose. This girl can't believe what she's seeing. Mom, there's a cow outside! What are you talking about? Mom comes out and they all head into the street to see where the fugitive beast is going. The bull destined to be sacrificed in a ritual for the Muslim holiday of Eid escaped from a slaughterhouse three days ago on Long Island and has been on the run ever since. It's an all hands on deck search with tranquilizer guns at the ready. Cops sent out a code red alert to everyone in the neighborhood. There is a loose wild bull. Stay in your homes. Do not approach. Call 911. You're on high alert for this bull. We are. You don't want to be walking down the street and see a bull loose coming your direction. Well, let's go find your boyfriend. They actually brought in a cow in heat. Her name is Norma Jean. We're just hoping and praying that he smells her and comes running. Alas, the attempt to seduce the bull with Norma Jean came to nothing. Searchers even used night vision cameras. You got eyes on him? Here's the latest plan, filling up a feeding station with grain, luring the bull into a gated corral. Once the bull enters, they'll slam the gate behind him. He saw his opportunity to escape and he ran for his life, but we have a sanctuary lined up for him where he will be loved and never eaten if we can grab him. But for now, the bull is out there somewhere. Whenever they do catch the bull, he does have that reprieve. He'll be taken to a sanctuary to live out his days. This is Bowie. So Bowie's just a couple days old, just now starting to open his or her eyes. This three-day-old little penguin chick just so happened to be named David Bowie on Friday since it hatched on the late singer's birthday. The Cincinnati Zoo posted a video on Monday showing Bowie opening its eyes. They're really cute at this stage. The zoo doesn't know the gender of the penguin just yet, but the name came from the zoo's Facebook fans. Bowie came about from our Facebook page, so we opened it up um, to the public to give names, uh, suggestions. So Bowie was the name that we all chose. We thought that was a really good one. It's the zoo's first birth of 2016. A blue penguin hatched weighing just 46 grams. The Cincinnati Zoo has the largest colony of little penguins in the United States now with 33. Four chicks have hatched recently and there are seven more eggs in the exhibit. This type of penguin prefers warmer climates so visitors won't get a chance to see the new chicks until the springtime. Freedom! Federal officials say a yearling humpback whale off Hawaii has been freed from a life-threatening entanglement in mooring gear. Romaid! They felt that? Jen, are you in? 
The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said a rescue team cut off about 140 feet of line and a plastic trawling buoy when they freed the whale near Maui last week. The whale's tail and fins were wrapped in small gauge line with the plastic buoy floating behind. Officials said the whale was in good condition, but the line wrapped around its tail started to cut into the animal's flesh and that it weighed a lot. The gear will be analyzed to find out where exactly it came from. Trained responders cut the gear off with a blade attached to a pole after getting close on an inflatable boat. It's a federal crime to approach a humpback whale and the team was working under a federal permit. Humpback whales are not an endangered species, but that doesn't mean they don't need a little help every now and then. I told him I was sorry for what was going to happen. I told him I loved him. A five hour standoff this afternoon ends in gunfire. Two people and a canine shot. The suspect in that shooting is a 56 year old female. After multiple attempts and several hours of negotiating with the woman, JPD has sent canine officer Gabo inside. The department received a call that the uh, maintenance man had been shot a local apartment complex. And I just happened to be in the area. She was obviously troubled, and but more important, we, we thought that she was probably going to shoot again. Gabo was the only dog that, at the time that had a vest. I've been with the Jonesboro Police Department for 10 years. Gabo's a uh, eight-year-old German Shepherd. We've been together seven years. He, he doesn't like to lay around the house. He doesn't like to, to just sit around. He likes to always be with me. He's very work driven. He loves to go to work. Uh, it was actually a training day. Um, we were doing canine training that day and I had left training to go run an errand and I heard a, uh, a shots fired call where somebody was wounded. It all started around 3 this afternoon when Jonesboro police responded to a call at the Gladiola Apartments about a 41-year-old male shot multiple times. I'm on the SWAT team. I'm one of my, my team guys, officers, my family, to go, to go home to their families. So I made the hard decision to, to go get them. Uh, I had one of the other handlers that was with me. Uh, called the vet. Good luck. Sorry. I know my heart was going to happen. It, it was the longest walk to walk 150 yards to my truck. I opened up the back door, reached in, started pet, petting Gabo. Pet Gabo, told him I was sorry for what was gonna happen. Told him I loved him. God. Told him I loved him, told him I was sorry for what, was, what, what I was gonna do to him. Gobble goes down to the short hall and is met by her. She puts the gun on him and pulls the trigger. By 8.16, he was being moved into surgery. After the surgery, I guess it was closer to midnight. I wasn't leaving my partner. So the staff there set me up with pillows and blankets and told me if I needed anything to, to call. Once everybody left, I just I opened his kennel and just laid there on the floor next to him for hours, hours early in the morning. While I was laying there on the floor, I reached out to uh, 
to Sandy and just let her know what had happened and to uh, thank her for providing me the vest. Uh, if it wouldn't have been for her, I, Gabo, there's no way Gabo would be here today. I heard a lot of pain in his voice, worry and concern, and um, that concerned me as well because we had donated the vest for Garbo several years prior and he's considered a member of our Vested Interest in Canines family. Vested Interest in Canines is a nonprofit organization nationwide whose mission is to provide bullet and stab protective vests and other equipment and services to law enforcement canines across the country. I'm an advocate for vests for every dog across the country that goes to work, they need it and they deserve it. They're officers just like their two-legged counterparts. Their danger is unknown. It can happen at any moment. I can't even tell you the emotion that I feel knowing that he was saved by the vest. Many law enforcement agencies don't have the available funds to provide the necessary life-saving equipment, which includes bullet and stab protective vests for their canine units. We are waiting for uh, Sandy Marcel. This will be the first time she's been to Arkansas, first time she's met Gabo. And how are you feeling? Uh, both excited and nervous, uh, ready to let her meet Gabo and see what she, her and her nonprofit did for us. How are you? Okay. Do it. This night was, it, it's an officer down. You know, it's a canine officer, but one of my officers was shot. And, you know, that's, as a chief, that's, that's not a good feeling. And uh, so it, it was hard on all of us. We were very lucky that night that uh, the vest did what it was designed to do. Gabo is a true warrior and he has since returned back to work and doing what he loves to do. They're, they are a great team. Uh, they have a great partnership. I have a strong love for each other and uh, it's family. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Gabo's story blew up on social media. Posts attention like that has brought letters of support, monetary donations, and even the promise of bulletproof vests for each canine on the Jonesboro Police Department's canine unit. We are conducting uh, one of our weekly training events where we have dogs from all over Northeast Arkansas come in and train with us. Hey, I didn't think you would ever come back to work or I always thought that he'd be just sick all the time, but uh, he progressed pretty rapidly in the recovery. He was acting like nothing was wrong by the second day. It's been incredible to meet him and to see that he's back to work full duty and working with his handler and know that he's great and he saved the lives of other officers the night that the incident occurred. And that's the most important thing, that he's okay and he's back at work and he's with his handler and doing what he loves to do. Gabo has been my best friend, my family, my partner for the last seven years. We get up and go to work every day together. We go home every night. We go on trips. We stay in hotels together. You know, we're, we're just inseparable. When he hurts, I hurt. If it wouldn't be for the vest, he wouldn't be here today. And I want other dogs to have that opportunity. Powerful stories that change the way you think. Impactful investigations that change the way you see. How many times has your car been stolen? Five times. Yeah. What? Do you think that you're a responsible owner of tigers? I damn sure do. We are loving Heartwarming moments that change the way you feel. 
Amazing. Now available in a place that changes the way you watch TV. Inside Edition, streaming.